In this video, we will explore the essential interview questions that medical laboratory technicians may face when seeking new job opportunities. Understanding these questions is crucial for candidates aiming to make a strong impression during their interviews. We will also provide comprehensive answers to help you prepare effectively. By familiarizing yourself with these inquiries, you can boost your confidence and enhance your chances of success in securing a position in this vital field. 1. Can you describe your experience working with laboratory equipment and procedures? In my previous role, I operated various laboratory equipment, including centrifuges, spectrophotometers, and microscopes. I ensured adherence to standard operating procedures, SOPS, and conducted regular maintenance checks to keep equipment in optimal condition. Training new staff on proper usage and safety protocols was also part of my responsibilities. Handling samples required meticulous attention to detail, following established guidelines for each type of test. My experience also includes troubleshooting minor equipment issues and ensuring compliance with safety regulations, which is crucial in a lab environment. 2. How do you handle and process samples in a laboratory? In a laboratory, handling and processing samples requires meticulous attention. Initially, I ensure that each sample is correctly labeled with unique identifiers to avoid any mix-ups. I follow established protocols for sample collection, ensuring that they are collected in sterile containers when necessary. After collection, I document the sample details, including the date, time, and any relevant patient information. When processing, I adhere strictly to standard operating procedures, including temperature control and timing for each test. After completing the tests, I ensure that samples are disposed of according to safety regulations, maintaining a clean and organized workspace throughout. 3. What types of medical tests and procedures can you perform? In my experience, I have conducted a variety of medical tests and procedures, including blood analyses such as complete blood counts, metabolic panels, and coagulation tests. I am proficient in performing urinalysis, microbiological cultures, and sensitivity testing. Additionally, I have experience with molecular diagnostics, including PCR and genetic testing. My training includes handling specimen collection, processing, and analysis, ensuring accurate results. I prioritize quality control and adhere to protocols while working with diagnostic instruments to maintain high standards in laboratory testing. 4. How do you ensure the safety of yourself and your colleagues in the lab? Ensuring safety in the lab involves several critical practices. First, I always adhere to established safety protocols and wear appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, such as gloves, goggles, and lab coats. Regular training on safety procedures is essential, and I participate in drills for emergencies, including chemical spills and fires. I also maintain clear communication with colleagues about potential hazards and encourage a culture of reporting unsafe conditions. Conducting routine safety audits of equipment and workspaces helps identify and mitigate risks promptly, creating a safer environment for everyone. 5. What steps do you take to avoid contamination when handling samples? To avoid contamination when handling samples, I follow strict protocols and utilize personal protective equipment, PPE, such as gloves, lab coats, and face masks. I work in a designated clean area, ensuring that all surfaces and equipment are thoroughly sanitized before starting any procedures. I also employ aseptic techniques, including using sterile tools and minimizing the exposure of samples to the open air. Regularly calibrating and maintaining equipment helps ensure its cleanliness. Additionally, I am vigilant in monitoring my movements and those of my colleagues to prevent cross-contamination during sample processing. 6. Can you explain what good laboratory practice, GLP, is and why it's important? Good laboratory practice, GLP, refers to a set of principles intended to ensure the quality and integrity of non-clinical laboratory studies. GLP establishes a framework for the planning, conduct, monitoring, and reporting of studies, which helps to guarantee that data is reliable and reproducible. Its importance lies in promoting consistency across laboratories, enhancing safety, and ensuring compliance with regulatory standards. By adhering to GLP, laboratories can facilitate the process of obtaining approvals for products and ensure that research findings are trustworthy for stakeholders and regulatory bodies. 7. What strategies do you use to manage and prioritize your workload in a busy lab environment? In a busy lab environment, I prioritize tasks based on urgency and importance, often using a task list to keep track of deadlines. I assess the workload each day, categorizing tasks by complexity and time required. Effective communication with team members is crucial. I regularly check in to ensure alignment and adjust priorities as needed. Utilizing time management techniques, such as the Pomodoro technique, helps maintain focus and productivity. I also allocate time for unexpected issues, ensuring that urgent tasks do not compromise the quality of work. 8. How do you stay updated with the latest innovations and technologies in the field? In my pursuit of continual learning, I regularly attend industry conferences and workshops. These events provide insights into emerging technologies and best practices. I also subscribe to leading scientific journals and online platforms that focus on laboratory advancements. Networking with fellow professionals allows me to exchange knowledge and experiences. Additionally, I participate in online forums and webinars, which are excellent resources for staying informed about the latest tools and methods that enhance laboratory operations and improve patient outcomes.
9. Can you describe your experience with maintaining and calibrating laboratory equipment? In my previous role, I was responsible for the maintenance and calibration of various laboratory instruments, including centrifuges, spectrophotometers, and pipettes. I followed a strict schedule for routine checks, ensuring that all equipment met regulatory standards. During calibration, I utilized specific reference materials and documented all results meticulously. If any discrepancies arose, I quickly identified the root cause and implemented corrective actions. My commitment to precision in equipment function significantly contributed to the reliability of test results and upheld the quality of our laboratory operations. 10. How do you handle discrepancies or unexpected results in your tests? When faced with discrepancies or unexpected results, I first verify the data by re-evaluating the test methods and rechecking the samples involved. This includes ensuring that all equipment was calibrated correctly and that reagents were fresh. If the issue persists, I consult with colleagues or supervisors for additional perspectives. Documenting the findings and any corrective actions taken is crucial, as it helps maintain transparency and accountability. Open communication with the team is essential in addressing these challenges, ensuring that corrective measures are implemented swiftly to uphold the integrity of our testing processes. 11. What is your approach to documenting and reporting test results? In my role, I prioritize accuracy and clarity when documenting and reporting test results. I start by ensuring that all data is recorded promptly in the appropriate format, whether electronic or paper-based. I carefully label samples and double-check my entries for errors. When generating reports, I include relevant details such as test parameters, methods used, and any observations. I also adhere strictly to laboratory protocols and regulations to maintain compliance. Regular audits and peer reviews of documentation help enhance reliability and traceability of results. 12. How do you ensure accuracy and precision when pipetting large samples? To ensure accuracy and precision when pipetting large samples, I first select the appropriate pipette size for the volume to be measured. Proper technique is crucial. I always hold the pipette vertically and immerse the tip just below the liquid surface without touching the bottom of the container. I pre-wet the tip by aspirating and dispensing the liquid a few times before taking the final measurement. Additionally, I use consistent speed while pipetting to avoid forming bubbles. Regular calibration of pipettes is essential, and I always verify measurements by repeating and cross-checking with a secondary method when necessary. 13. Can you describe your experience with using Laboratory Information Systems, LIS? In my previous role, I extensively utilized Laboratory Information Systems, LIS, for managing patient data and test results. I became proficient in entering and retrieving data, tracking samples, and generating reports. This experience enhanced my ability to streamline workflows, which significantly reduced turnaround times for results. I also collaborated with IT staff to troubleshoot issues and ensure data integrity. My familiarity with LIS contributed to improved communication within the lab and with other departments, enabling a more efficient and organized approach to laboratory operations. 14. How do you contribute to maintaining a positive and collaborative team atmosphere in the laboratory? I believe that fostering a positive and collaborative team atmosphere starts with clear communication and mutual respect among colleagues. I actively listen to my teammates and encourage open discussions to share ideas and address concerns. Regularly acknowledging each other's contributions helps build morale. I also participate in team building activities and support a culture where feedback is constructive. By being approachable and willing to help others, I aim to create an environment where everyone feels valued and motivated to work together effectively. 15. What would you do in case of a chemical spill in the lab? In the event of a chemical spill, my first priority would be to ensure the safety of all personnel in the area. I would immediately alert colleagues and evacuate the area if necessary. Next, I would assess the situation and consult the Material Safety Data Sheet, MSDS, for specific guidance on the chemical involved. If trained and equipped, I would use appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, to contain the spill. I would follow established protocols for spill response, which may involve using absorbent materials and disposing of them according to hazardous waste regulations. Lastly, I would report the incident to the supervisor and document the spill for future review. 16. How do you handle working with someone you often disagree with? In situations where I find myself working with someone I frequently disagree with, I prioritize open communication and active listening. I approach discussions with a mindset of understanding their perspective and finding common ground. By focusing on shared goals and the importance of collaboration, I aim to create a constructive dialogue. I also remain professional and respectful, ensuring that disagreements do not affect our working relationship. If needed, I suggest involving a neutral third party to help facilitate discussions and mediate any conflicts, ensuring that our work remains productive and effective. 17. Can you explain the process of preparing documentation for equipment repairs and maintenance requests? Preparing documentation for equipment repairs and maintenance requests involves several key steps. First, identify the specific issue or malfunction with the equipment. Document the problem clearly, including any error codes or unusual behavior observed. Next, gather relevant information such as the equipment's model number, serial number, and maintenance history. Fill out any required forms or templates, ensuring all fields are completed accurately. 
Include details about the urgency of the repair and any previous maintenance performed. Finally, submit the documentation to the appropriate department or personnel for processing and keep copies for your records. 18. How do you ensure the reliability of test results through data validation processes? Ensuring reliability of test results involves rigorous data validation processes. Initially, I perform checks on incoming data to verify accuracy and consistency with established protocols. This includes cross-referencing results with control samples and historical data. Regular calibration of equipment is essential, along with routine maintenance checks. I also implement statistical methods, such as control charts, to monitor variations and identify outliers. Documentation is critical. I maintain detailed records of validation steps taken, ensuring transparency and reproducibility of results. These practices collectively enhance the credibility of the data. 19. What experience do you have in consulting with pathologists for diagnostic purposes? In my previous role as a laboratory technician, I regularly collaborated with pathologists to discuss test results and assist in diagnosing various conditions. This involved reviewing case histories, interpreting test findings, and ensuring that all relevant data was available for the pathologist's assessment. I actively participated in multidisciplinary team meetings, where we discussed complex cases and sought additional insights. This experience enhanced my understanding of the diagnostic process and reinforced the importance of clear communication and collaboration in delivering accurate patient care. 20. How would you address a situation where a colleague is not following proper safety protocols? In such a situation, I would first approach the colleague privately to discuss my observations in a non-confrontational manner. It's important to express concern for their safety and the safety of others rather than placing blame. I would remind them of the specific safety protocols and why they are essential. If the behavior continues, I would document the incidents and report them to a supervisor or safety officer, ensuring that the issue is addressed appropriately. Encouraging a culture of safety is vital, and I would also suggest organizing a team meeting to refresh everyone's knowledge of safety protocols. 21. Can you describe your experience with inventory management in a laboratory setting? In my previous roles, I was responsible for overseeing inventory management processes, which included tracking supplies, ordering reagents, and ensuring proper storage conditions. I utilized inventory management software to monitor stock levels and expiration dates, enabling timely reordering and minimizing waste. Regular audits were conducted to reconcile physical counts with system records. This meticulous approach ensured that essential materials were always available, thus supporting uninterrupted lab operations. Collaborating with suppliers also helped optimize procurement strategies and maintain budgetary constraints. 22. How do you approach troubleshooting issues with laboratory instruments? When troubleshooting laboratory instruments, I start by identifying the symptoms and gathering relevant information about the issue. I consult the instrument's manual and check for common problems, such as miscalibrations or error messages. If applicable, I run a few test samples to see if the issue persists. Collaborating with colleagues can provide fresh insights, so I often discuss the problem with my team. If the issue remains unresolved, I escalate it to the technical support team or a qualified technician for further assistance, ensuring minimal disruption to laboratory operations. 23. What techniques do you use to properly place a sample in a microscope? When placing a sample in a microscope, I first ensure that the slide is clean and free from any debris. I gently use a pair of tweezers to handle the slide, avoiding direct contact with the glass to prevent contamination. Next, I align the slide with the stage clips, ensuring it's secured without excessive pressure that could damage the slide. I adjust the focus and light intensity to optimize visibility, ensuring the specimen is centered in the field of view. Finally, I check the objective lens used, selecting the appropriate magnification for the sample type being examined. 24. How do you effectively present research or results to someone with little scientific knowledge? When presenting research or results to individuals with limited scientific knowledge, I focus on clarity and simplicity. I start by using everyday language and avoiding jargon, ensuring concepts are relatable. Visual aids, such as charts and diagrams, can illustrate key points effectively. I emphasize the practical implications of the findings, linking them to real-world applications. Engaging the audience through questions and encouraging discussion helps gauge understanding. Finally, I summarize the main points to reinforce retention and ensure that the message is clear and accessible. 25. Can you share an example of a time you had to overcome an obstacle in a lab setting? In a previous lab role, I encountered a significant obstacle when a critical piece of equipment malfunctioned just before a scheduled analysis. This situation could have delayed our project timeline. I quickly collaborated with my team to identify the issue and mobilized resources to troubleshoot the problem. While one team member contacted the manufacturer for support, others prepared alternative methods to ensure we met our deadlines. Through effective communication and teamwork, we resolved the issue promptly, allowing us to proceed with minimal disruption and successfully complete our analysis on time. In this video, we've explored the top 25 interview questions and answers for aspiring medical laboratory technicians. Understanding these questions can greatly enhance your confidence and preparedness for your interview. Remember, the key to success lies in both your technical knowledge and your ability to communicate effectively. We hope you found these insights helpful as you embark on your career journey.
If you enjoyed the content, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe for more valuable tips and resources. Your support helps us create more informative videos just for you.